But this is the thing is that even the ones that do have a dad, those dads are coming from a generation of themselves being mama's boys. So they are not in the position themselves to be uh, like the head of the household because they kind of have this uh, mentality of them having been taken care of by their mothers. Mm -hmm. Mm. And they're, they're a little bit more so maybe in tune with like being babied. Mm. You know, and I think a lot of guys expect that from their girlfriends or their wives is to be babied like their mothers used to do for them at one point in time. Welcome back to another episode of the Sergio Talks podcast. It's your boy Sergio's Talks. It's your boy Matt. It's your boy Carl. And uh, I know you guys haven't noticed, but this is actually our first time back in three weeks. Three weeks. Two weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. And uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I got into a fight with a fridge. I would have said a bear if I were you. And, and the fridge won. If it was a bear, I wouldn't be here. Um, I would. That's what you think. I what? Would. Yeah, it, same. I would. Same. What? Be here if there was a bear. Yeah, because you guys are... Bo- what? Because no. what, what you're about to say? Would you let Rihanna shit on your face for 50000 how did you how did you get how did you please how did you get there yeah would you would you let your girl shit on your chest if it turns her on i would i'm sorry on my chest it's okay no not a lot though once in a very well yeah but it's your girl she's like the future mother of your yeah, children yeah i i totally respect that but it's a shit it is a shit <laughs> it's a caca it's a would you do I thought you guys were saying like you guys would be the type to say that you fought against the bear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. No, right. And you guys would are, still be there. Right. Yeah. So you guys are both liars and both toxic. No. I thought you were going to say you guys are b- b- black. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say it because we're black. Because we're monkeys. It- <laughs> 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 All right. Just joking. Okay. Um I mean, although I am excited, I came, I came in here with the mindset of wanting to talk about like a serious topic. Okay. Only because I feel like it was just fitting and I feel like we really haven't spoken about it. And I have myself, I've come to like certain epiphanies lately. Um, whoa. <laughs> what is this word? <laughs> <laughs> My guy left for three weeks and when came back with epiphany. <laughs> what is this? Epiphany is not, is not the most complicated world You look like a damn epiphany, world. bro. Epiphany. You guys, you guys are just making yourself sound more dumb. I don't way. care. Okay. okay. She no knows one, what epiphany is. Do you want me to no, say colonel again? Yo, <laughs> no one says epiphany. Uh, a lot of people say epiphany. I, I still actually don't know what it means, and we keep talking about what epiphany is epiphany. Is like a, like a, a moment of realization of something like extreme per se. Okay, so a moment of realization. That's extreme. Per that se. okay, but okay. instead of saying moment of realization, you say epiphany. Uh, never heard no. that. Continue. Yeah. Well, now you guys are smarter. You're welcome. Maybe you guys will get a girl now. Because I say that on a date. I'll, I'll be there. Listen, um, yes, because you're gonna sound so a lot more. My favorite color is gray epiphany, and then uh, I was wearing white thing. No, that was. <laughs> <laughs> no, you go like that. Oh my god, I saw you, and I was epiphanized. Ooh, smooth. Mm-hmm. Does that work? Does that work? No. I, am I, I gonna was get the word did, was, was the word epiphany or epiphanized? What did I say? Yeah, but you just, like, you, you just it's you, like it's English. You, English yeah. usually English just English does not mean you can't put ed at the end of every word. Yes, it doesn't make it a word. Yes, yes. Okay, Google it. No, Google epiphanized. Yo, keep on going. Thank you. Um, so you guys are both single. Just wanted to put that out there. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Um, but now if we. Take your time. If we turned it down a notch and I were to ask you guys, what would you guys say are the three main qualities that you guys are looking for in a woman? Not, I'm not talking about like surface level stuff. I'm like, like take the time to really think about what you would want in a woman. Damn. Can you start? That was really surface, but uh, I was about no, to say none, none, none of that shit. So tell surface. the people genuinely. Think of it as you're you're talking to the ladies right now, and you're letting them know what you would expect for a woman to bring to the table. Can I have like a, a big one? Okay, I have one. I am looking for a woman that has the drive, but like more than just drive in a relationship. Drive for everything. So when I'm gonna be with her. She's going to drive me to be better at all time. And 
to like built an empire. I know it sounds cheesy, but built an empire with me. You know, like most of the relationship you just start with, it's nice, it's, it's beautiful, whatever, but we don't build anything. It's just love. But I think for a relationship, there's more than just love. So that would be one of the things that I'm looking for is a woman that's going to drive me to be better and to put the relationship even higher than what it should be and to never stop and go in that direction. Mm. I like that, Picasso. I think for me, um, it's a bit less serious than yours, but goofy as hell. I need to, a girl to be really um, friend, not, not friendly, but like to be my best friend, mm. you know, just to be herself and just goof because i'm goofy as shit so i can't i cannot date a girl that's just too serious in a way you know mm -hmm. so i need me a girl to know that it's never that deep mm. and everything happens for a reason so we're gonna joke around about it you know mm. type of vibe i don't know if you guys saw but logan paul just engaged uh his girlfriend okay they've oh. been together 14 months i think they were exclusive after a week and it, it was just funny to hear him talk And to see how she was, like, in the videos and stuff. And just to go on your point, like, like she was very goofy. Mm. And, you know, obviously, like, he's a very business-oriented person. He has Prime. He has all these projects going on, right? And he has this girl by his side that now he deemed fit in a sh short period of time to, to engage lifestyle. her. Yeah, to her his lifestyle. But just to be someone like Logan Paul with his status, his money, the clout, and everything that he has, for someone to be able to penetrate, you know, like penetrate mm -hmm. through his his life mm -hmm. and to make him feel like that he wants to propose that soon like that has to be like a very special kind of woman mm -hmm. Do you know what i mean yeah. well you mentioned it it's like it's the perfect fit and i think yeah. like most men are the same as him is when you you have your life going on you have your stuff going on everything's happening whatever you can date around and not never find this like perfect fit or whatever or like you don't engage after years whatever it is and then there's this woman that seems like it's everything you've been looking for and everything like just and then i call it a soulmate but that's the thing though is that not everybody is like him and that's the problem so what do you mean there's like there's like let's say for example someone like him who's constantly moving constantly doing okay. things it's very hard for a woman to be able to succumb to that lifestyle Just, yeah. you know what i mean so he had to find someone because she's quite frankly giving a lot up of her life you know if she wants to be with him he's traveling all the time between mm -hmm. the states europe and all, like everywhere around the world like if she's wants to come on board and follow him through these like through this journey she has to give up quite a few things along the way too You know what I mean? But the average guy is not that busy, doesn't have that much going for them, doesn't have a lifestyle like Logan Paul has, you know? So a lot of times when the girls get with guys that are not like him, so like below average or average, guys are not willing to commit that soon. There's mm. a very few guys that are willing and able to commit and then propose within 14 months of meeting a girl. Mm -hmm. Meeting a girl. You know what I mean? Facts. But the fact that you said that brings me to your initial question, the sec, because you asked two qualities that we're looking for. Three. Three. So my second one, as you guys know, I'm someone that like hates routine. So because you just mentioned it, it like pop up in my head, I would want someone that is capable of understanding my lifestyle as like every single day is different. We're always like, it's not nothing. It's not that deep. You get what I mean? Like is mm. is. We're just enjoying every day. We're going by day by day. I I like living in the present. I like like I know some people live in the future. Some people live in the past. I'm like, listen, when you were like 16 and you wanted to be 20, 25 with a certain status, and then you get to 25, and then you don't even like take the time of like I'm at the place I wanted to be when I was 16, mm -hmm. and you think about 30 when you all get 30. You're always doing that, you know. You always live either in regret or you want to live in the future. So I would want a girl that is living in the present with me day by day, enjoying every full experience to the fullest mm -hmm. and stuff like that, yeah. So you'd like a girl to take you out of your comfort zone? Definitely. Yeah. If yeah. we start being com like comfort, I hate it. Too comfortable? Too comfortable, I hate it. It needs to be always like not... <laughs> Yes, yeah, I'm gonna sound same. fucking toxic because I say that, but like not like just like some some roller coasters, but roller coasters in a good way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Type of way. Surprises and shit. Because yeah, well, yeah. Surprises, different experiences. But we, I feel like, I feel like what you're highlighting are a lot of things that depend on you. 
because I think as the guy, it's it's you who makes that a possibility. Yes and no. Yes and no. Because if she doesn't match my energy when I do all these activities and all, if I if I want to have this certain lifestyle and she doesn't follow up, it's just like, I just want to stay home. I just want to eat, watch Maybe, movies, mm. nothing else. Or like when I even do this, all these activities and she's never down. Mm-hmm. well she, she's not my match that's how mm-hmm. i see it so yes i agree in a way that like i'll organize it most definitely but like i want someone that as soon as i'm like do you want to do this and before my sentence is even done the girl's like yes mm. yes yes go go and then nothing is complicated we just go we we live the experience and every single experience as it could be super luxurious as just like an experience of going to the poorest country in the world or going to the richest it has nothing to do with anything mm. she sees every like opportunity like like an experience mm-hmm. that's who I'm, what i was what i would be looking for yeah mm. i think for me the three things that i would want in a in a woman um i would definitely need someone that matches my empathy okay yeah i would need someone who resonates with other people who feels for other people who deems her life purpose is to also give back to others Mm -hmm. and to take care of others um in that same breath i feel like i would want to have a partner that because for me and this is going to sound like i'm a fucking bruised puppy but i would need a girl who understands me because there's very few people that if you have a vision if you have a goal if you set out to do something that they're not able to see the same vision that you have Mm -hmm. and i feel that by having someone like a friend is one thing but having your wife be able to share that vision that you have yeah. like that is like next level because mm. that is the person that you're with on on a daily basis all the time and to not have someone that you could bounce ideas off of and stuff like that who is also like your your partner mm. to me is like i would i would need to have that in my dynamic mm. and then thirdly i just need i just need to have someone who brings me peace you know i know where i'm gonna be i know where i'm gonna be at in a few years from now I know what kind of lifestyle I'm able to provide for myself now and what kind of lifestyle I'm going to be able to provide to myself later on. So just to know, like, I'll take care of you. Don't worry about it. But the only thing like I'll need for you to do in exchange for that is just bring me peace, mm. bring me happiness. And that's all I kind of, I'll ever really need as like a, a, a return, you know. And good food. Well, that's going to be on, on me. Because that, cause that's the thing. It's like, I don't want, and I know like a lot of, I know especially like the red pill stuff, right? It's like, I want a girl that could cook and clean and stuff like that. Mm. Me, the kind of lifestyle that I want, it's bro, I want to be traveling. I want us to be waking up with a view of Mykonos and someone's bringing us the food, mm. you know? Yeah. I don't mind having the dynamic where I'm working and I'm sending you to go get your nails done mm. and you're coming back and you're coming to show me what colors you thought of getting your nails done for me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Don't get me wrong. I do want a girl that has something going for herself. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I want that to be like like your 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 side project, your side hustle. Or it could be your main. It could be your main your, it could be your main project if that's what you want to be doing. But I just want you to know that push comes to shove. Like I got you. Mm. And it's not like we're depending on each other to be able to provide a, a lifestyle for our relationship. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like all these other guys are like, they're expecting to have like this girl that just cooks and cleans for them. Stays at home type of vibe. Stays at home, doesn't club, doesn't do any of these things. So then it's like essentially like, what do you want? You want like a roommate? You want like a, yeah, okay. you want a maid? You want a cook? Mm. Like if you are so high value and you have the money to be able to get yourself a own cook and that, why would you want your girl to be the one doing that for you? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Don't you want to give her like the princess treatment? Right. Like the princess treatment, not only that, but it's like, like I know if I, if I get with a girl, she, she knows how to cook somewhat. It doesn't even have to be that deep, Mm. right? It just has to be, let's say we don't have a cook yet. Yet, Let's say we don't have a maid yet. If you just have the basics so that one day when we no longer need that anymore, somebody else could take care of that. No problem. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, I'm not fine. I'm not trying to find a girl that knows how to cook because I'm expecting her to cook for the rest of our lives. Mm. Where I'm at now, yeah, sure, it's, it's great to have a girl who knows how to cook. But later on, honey, you pop out three kids. You think I'm going to also have you cooking and cleaning after the house and stuff? It's mm. like, no, you just birthed three children nine months apart, 
quite frankly, we raised them together, but like a lot of it went on you physically and mentally. Yeah. So why the fuck would I also now expect you to continue, continuously cook and clean after me and them for the rest of our lives until they're 18 and then they move out or whatever age they move out? Yeah. It's like, no, like kick your feet up. You did what I had to do. You popped out the two kids. They're beautiful. They're, they're healthy. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're perfect examples as children. So it's like, you know, I got you. I just had an idea. What do you guys think would be the best way you can help your wife to be to have some rest after she gave birth to three kids? Yeah. Well, I already I had the discussion already, and to me, I I, I know like I'm not in it, so like a, a lot of like probably uh, fathers out there might say like, yeah, I, told, I said the same thing, and like it's different once having kids. But yeah. for me, my the way that I think my philosophy is is that if, again, we speak about it off camera, mm. right? Me in my mind, it's like, yo, she carried a baby for nine months. The thing was quite frankly killing her mm -hmm. because her immune system's low, she's she's moody, she's cranky, she's more oh, susceptible goodness. to being sick and all these kind of things for nine months, feeling sick, headaches, back pains, all of it. Meanwhile, I kind of felt helpless the whole time mm. because yeah, I could give her foot rubs, massages, warm baths and stuff like that, sure. But none of those things are to compare to having held a baby for nine months. Yeah, yeah. So then post-pregnancy, after the baby's born, there is no, you take the, the morning shift and I take the night shift. I'm taking morning, I'm taking the night shift, I'm taking the lunch shift if I have to. Mm. The baby's crying, like I'll go. If there's, there's obviously certain things that like a mother will need to have to do. Yeah, I was about to say. I can't. Yeah, connection yeah. with the kid also. Right, but any other time when it just comes to letting her rest, like if she, I'm not gonna kick. I'm not gonna be the one kicking her out of the bed to go check on the baby. Mm. You know what I mean? Just because it's her shift. Mm. Like I'm going. I'm staying up with it. I'm feeding it because I've withheld the energy w from those nine months. Do, do, do you get what I'm saying? It's heavy for her. You yeah, it's heavy for her. Exactly. Really like it weighed on me to a certain degree, but nothing in comparison. Not enough for me to after the baby's born to be like, oof. Like I'm drained oh, yeah, yeah. after after being there for nine months. It's like, buddy, now is your time to perform. Mm -hmm. Like you weren't able to be there before, but you're able to be there now. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's your turn. What would you say? I think I would probably do the same, but I would do everything in my power to make her feel good. Literally, mm. like how do you say that? Um, because there's not much you can really do, you know, except for being here for her in a way. Yeah. But uh, after after the kid, shit. Yeah, I'll, I'll just be here for her. Mm. Yeah. Are you guys ready to get married? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Wait. If the right person comes through? I feel like I am. I mean, why not? I, do you want to get married? I do. 100%. Together? A big marriage. Wait. Oh, my God. Now? <laughs> but uh, I, I think as, as a kid, I've, well, as a kid, okay, relax. In, in recent in recent years, I've kind of, I, at first I was like, oh, you know, I don't really care so much about weddings. Like it's more for her than it is for me and stuff like that. Mm. But I feel like now as I'm getting older and obviously my whole TikTok page is filled with proposal videos and the lady walking down the aisle and the groom crying and stuff like that. I've gotten more into like the the marriage, the engagement vibes. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? To the point where when it comes to rings, I find myself shopping for rings, but I was gonna say something fucked up. I was about to say for no one in particular, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like I just, I just find myself like shopping for rings and like mix matching them and doing all these things together yeah. to the point where even when I go to jewelry stores, like our like our jeweler Don Jay, yeah, I find myself looking at different types and seeing the different cuts and asking him questions, being like, "So you're telling me that I could put these diamonds with this ring with that center stone?" And he was like, "Yeah, no problem." Makes whatever sense. you want and not only that but you guys remember when we went for we went for this and for your for your cross yeah he i was so scared because he showed me how durable th this gold bracelet was and you guys remember he oh yeah, yeah he yeah, yanked it and i was like yo yo my, my future bracelet <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean yeah so um uh yeah i've fallen in love and i think i i know what ring in are particular you, wait, that you, I was looking at? Are you telling us something? Hey, listen, man. I'm just saying, he showed me one ring in particular, and if it's not going to be for me, I hope one of the viewers watching is going to go ahead and pick it up for themselves. So, fellas, if you are shopping for an engagement ring and you want one, check out this one. 
<laughs> sound effects. <laughs> and ladies, if if this if that ring if that ring is the one that you want your man's to get, then send him send him this video. What are you doing? I'm putting the ring. It's not on your finger. I'm not putting it on your finger. The, nope. It's not, still not happening. It's still not happening. Like I'm not going to do it. Why not? It's going to be so beautiful. Like this. No. Uh, debatable. So ladies, if that's the ring that you want your man to get, send in this video. Hmm. Just send it. Uh, gotta, gotta do what you gotta do. What were we going to say? I was going to say they have also a lot of stuff other than rings. Yo, he's been feeling himself since he has this cross. I, I know. He's he's gonna, been, he's see, gonna have see, someone. I could, I could wait. I could be right now like that, you know, like this. But since I went to Donje, I came back, and I'm like that. Okay, roll, relax, 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 relax. Like relax. that. You know what I'm saying? I feel good. Carl has been so full of himself lately that he's most likely gonna get a girl proposed to him. So no. if anything, the ring that we just showed is gonna go on your finger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no in all honesty guys for it's it's still engagement season it's still wedding season so if you haven't gotten yours yet make sure to go ahead and check them out but also for all kinds of jewelry chains bracelet rings pendants hmm. bust down rolexes everything you need don jay has been taking care of us this entire summer so if you guys want to be taken care of just as good as us then go ahead and check out don jay Mine, mine would be like definitely everything that has like you guys know how is it in my household like uh, the man is cooking my mom's not cooking mm -hmm. so i would definitely do all the cooking but probably even before but like definitely doing all the the, the cooking you know i'm a clean freak anyways so i'll do all the chores are like everything to make her life so easy mm -hmm. then like the only thing she has to worry is that time that she has like really has to take care of the baby because it's mama mm -hmm. and not dad so at that moment obviously it's going to be her time but the rest of the time Princess treatment during the, the during the pregnancy most definitely after when she's tired she needs to rest up I'll be there a hundred percent and make sure her life is the easiest as possible ever yeah. but if you think about it we say that like as if when she's not pregnant we're not gonna give the same treatment I'm gonna give the same treatment the only difference would be well obviously you're not as tired or whatever so then you can be working i'll be working or whatever it is mm -hmm. that would be the only difference but when she's carrying your baby then you gotta step up the game and mm -hmm. then, yeah it's not only that because like there's a lot i think there's a i think like women during and after pregnancy is not talked about enough i don't think people are talking about postpartum depression enough mm. because this is a serious thing where a woman after the pregnancy, they're depressed. Mm -hmm. And it's it's something that, like with all like the hormonal imbalances and also like how they look and stuff like that, there's a lot that goes through their mind that I think is not talked about enough. And I think that's where a guy like needs to acknowledge that that is a real thing. A lot of women take their lives after giving birth. Mm. A lot of, a lot of uh, uh, moms don't even love their newborn child. Yeah, I was about to say this thing. I heard that. You know, it's like it's different. It's, it's right away. It's either like like unconditional love, or yeah, like yeah. sometimes they're like sometimes they're like they don't want to hold the baby. Like it's really, really, really fucked up. Yeah. You know, and the thing is, is that like a part of that is again. I know where I'm going to be at once I have kids, and this, that, and a third. I'm very confident about that. So to me, it's like once the kids are out, like mommy makeovers on me. Hmm. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You want you want your your breasts redone, no problem. You mm. want you know you want oh. you you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. You want and anything that you want to do to make your like to make it so you that see. you feel confident about yourself again, no problem. Okay. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just because I feel like a lot of men once the baby's out, they kind of like sit on the back burner. Yeah. We're like yeah no like they're there to raise a kid, but it's also like are you like checking in with your girl? Do you know what I mean? What, mentally. I have another thing. What do you guys think of this thing that some men, and obviously we're not in this position because we, we don't have, well, we're both single and then your girl's not pregnant, obviously. But <laughs> um, what do you guys think? Of, you know, you know, they, some men are jealous of the, the connection of like the, the, yes. the woman and, and the uh, baby? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. How would you how could you be jealous? Because of the yeah. attention. Yeah. Cuz the attention of the, the mom gives to the baby. Some some guys get jealous over girls like giving attention to their dogs. 
like girls that give too much attention to their dogs and like the guy the guy gets jealous because it's like okay like it's just like it's just a dog like get over it like well it's just it's just our baby i mean it's or it's just like okay like it's just a baby like like you checked up on the baby like can we go back to like like hanging out again or something like that you know how they see it actually i'm I'm not in it again is let's say they've been together for seven years five years whatever whatever the number is and it's been all like puppy love right it's, it's the love just them seven years of puppy love no but you get you get what i mean it's just it's them yeah only and me. now there's a third party i'm not gonna say that there's a, there's a there's a, the, <laughs> there's just a, a a third person that comes in and then the, all the love of the mother goes to the kids it's, so yeah. then they're just they feel jealous of like like we don't have what we had Type I mean, of thing. If, what do you guys feel about that? It's your baby. Why would you feel like that? At the end of the day, it's it's something. I mean, some one that you created with your like girl. Like you too, yeah. You too, and you have a damn baby, and now you're jealous of the love that the mother has for her kid. That's crazy. That's your kid too. It's, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. Oh wow, no. It's like I I, I don't I, I would need to have like my ex my future girlfriend. To be pregnant for me to understand. I, yeah. I, I don't get it. Like, I get don't get it, but get? I know that there's a lot of circumstances where that's the case. I think that is what, again, I'm, I'm not saying these things for facts, but I think that a, there's a lot of men that leave the relationships for those reasons. That's crazy. That they feel like they're not getting the attention that they want or that they deserve anymore. Maybe some girl is giving them that kind of attention elsewhere. So I feel like men that are in relationships after they have a kid are either more susceptible to cheat or to leave the relationship. Um, Again, I'm talking like about a a very specific group of men, but I just feel like it, it, because the thing is, is like, it kind of makes sense, right? The girl had the baby for nine months, kept it in hers. It's, it's going to sound very harsh to say, but the baby's more so hers than it is yours. In a way. Because it was inside of her? Because she, like, it was inside of her for nine months, and she's the one who went through the physical and mental turmoil of having the baby in her stomach for nine months, Mm -hmm. and everything that she needs to do to keep that baby alive after it's born. Even during. Well, that's what I'm saying, during and after. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that it's more one person's or the other, but there's a different connection that the mother has with the baby than the man has. But that's yeah, what they're jealous about. Yeah, but even now, you can I understand. see every, every, everyone has a better connection in a way with their mom, I think, no? But yes and no. That's it's, different though. Yeah, that, but uh, if, you're, if you're a man, usually you're more connection is more with the mother and if you have a, like your daughter like, you have a sister you have a sister too. Mm-hmm. What about your sisters? Are they more connected with the mother or, the, or, or your, your father? Mother. What about Mother. you? Okay, so some some people that say they 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 like oh I'm daddy's little girl. You he- rarely hear daddy's son or daddy's little son or whatever, or you hear mama's boy, right? Mm. So that would be a little different. I don't know if it's a like sex thing, as like is your the first woman you you're a man is the first woman, and then the same thing for as your woman, and then it's the, the dad. You get what I mean? Yeah, but I have a purple pill take on that, though. Okay, please. Let's hear it. Because I think that society now, it's made men mama's boys. Men? I think, like, society now, the way it's structured is that men are more, uh, are more, there's more men being mama's boys. Where back then... Okay, I agree. Uh, I get what you mean. Okay, the, yeah. the men were always like heir to the throne. They were always looking up and being taught by the fathers. Yeah. The fathers were the ones. It was a patriarchy, right? It was the fathers that were passing down uh, the knowledge to their sons. sons. Okay, but because in my opinion, it's because it's going deeper. Because most families now don't have a dad. They don't have the patriarchy. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, I, but no, but, but the so thing they is, don't ha- but this is the thing is that even the ones that do have a dad, those dads are coming from a generation of themselves being mama's boys. So they are not in the position themselves to be uh, like the head of the household because they kind of have this uh, mentality of them having been taken care of by their mothers mm-hmm. and they're, they're a little bit more so maybe in tune with like being babied mm. you know and i think a lot of guys expect that from their girlfriends or their wives is to be babied like their mothers used to do for them at one point in time mm-hmm. but the way that i think about it is that it's not supposed to be like that mm. I, i'm not saying that it's not supposed to I, f- for me personally it, it shouldn't be that way so to the point where 
I know my mom is very much so like that. I know that if had I gone a different route, I would have been very much so a mama's boy. Mm -hmm. And to a certain degree, I was at one point, I was always dependent on food, getting cleaned up after and all this stuff. But I realized later on is that I needed to kind of like detach and like to, my, my dad said, uh, like, uh, like go with the umbilical cord mm -hmm. and not rely so much on that. Like go out and do your own thing. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But I feel like it's very easy for men that have mothers like that, especially like in, from immigrant households or European households and stuff like that, where it's very like, um, like family oriented. Mm -hmm. um, it's harder for, to, det to detach from that. So I feel like now society is structured where men are more so mama's boys. And I think that's what turns off girls about mama boys. Mm -hmm is that they expect their girlfriend to take care of them like the mothers do. Like, my girl's but, not my mom. You know but, what I'm saying? Most definitely. But isn't that crazy, though? Because cause the woman don't want, let's say, a man that's a mama's boy, right? But they'll have uh, a child with whatever, a man, and then the child is going to be uh, a boy, and they're going to do the same thing with the boy. But wrong. What do you mean? No, not thing? wrong. It is wrong because if the father is there and is taking up the yeah. role of, of establishing... He's not going to be there. That's why I'm saying that. Cause okay, but if he's not gonna... there, then that's a different story. Uh -huh. We're talking about it, a dynamic where the dad is there. Yeah, but because we're saying 2023, which is the main problem. Most men are not there. So you get what I mean. Most men are there. I don't think... Yeah, I was going to say most yeah. men are... Most men are there. Okay, most men maybe, are there. Maybe, okay, maybe. The majority of men are there. Yes, there's not... <laughs> There's I not there's not more than fifty percent of men that are not there yeah. for the children. No, I'm not saying like 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 that. I'm saying like like a, a perfect family type of thing in in America. I don't I don't see it like that. But are I you say are you saying that dads are not in the picture? Like they're no. not, like they went to go get milk and never came back? <laughs> no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying just more like the perfect family type of thing. Like more like okay. Like uh, you're saying that the father's I'm not using as my involved. Example. I'm using my example as my family. Like my dad is not there. He's partially there. Like, he'll talk to me once in a very fucking while. You get what I mean? Yeah, but most but fathers are you, there. In, the, in this place right now, out of three people, it's you. Yeah, but you like, two are literally my only friends that your dad is still there. All my other friends don't have a dad. Okay, most of my friends... When I met you, I literally thought about it. I'm like, oh, wow, you're the second person now that I know that has a dad. All my other friends from basketball, from my whole life, young, don't have a dad. That's crazy. Cause so that's why I'm thinking this way, because I'm like, everyone that I've met in general don't have a dad. When I was in high school, every, it, it was literally like a, a running gag, a bad running gag. Like, it was going around. It's like, is your dad still there? No. That's <laughs> So that's why I'm thinking this way. It's like, it's not because I want to think this way. So I'm like, most people that I have around me don't have their dad or or they just have like a separate relationship. Yeah. Like is this the the the, the couple is just not together anymore, and then she's more or he's more with the mom in general, and then partially with the dad. Well, why are I you making those eyes? Because I was just reading a statistic: father deprivation is a more reliable predictor of criminal activity than race. Environment of poverty, father deprived children are seventy two percent of all teenage murders, sixty percent of rapists, seventy percent of kids incarcerated. Twice as likely, sorry, twice as likely to quit school, 11 times more likely to be violent, three of four teens suicide, 80% of the adolescents, sorry, 80% of the uh, adolescents in psychiatric hospitals, and 90% of runaways. So that's all because the dad's not there. The dad's not there. Damn. So, so there's a lot of statistics the of like, like the negative impact of having a fatherless household. So approximately 80% of single parent homes are led by single mothers, therefore leading to nearly 25% of our youth growing up without a father in the home. So it's 25% of fathers that are like your situation. Yeah. Damn. I still think it's stupid high. It's ridiculously it's really high. high. Yeah. But, and so the reason why I was, I was talking about that is that the reason why I was saying like the whole like like the baby is more, belongs more so to like the woman than the man is because like the men have this mentality of like, like, there's less of an attachment to the baby because there wasn't like a, a physical and mental process that went behind it mm -hmm. like the woman did. So for a man, it's much more easier to just leave mm -hmm. because the baby isn't dependent on his milk and stuff like that or to be kept alive through the father. So the father, if he leaves, he wants to dip, he could just dip. Mm. A mom can't do that. Mm. A baby is relying on the mom to be kept alive essentially for the most part. I'm not saying... For all of it but you know what i mean yeah. yeah so i think it's a lot easier for men to just leave because it's like okay well you take care of it mm -hmm. i think a lot of men have that kind of Disney mindset or you know lack of attention well i'm gonna go get attention somewhere else 
So it's a very cheap, it's a very like low scumbag way of of, of living, but You're, that is the society that we live now. That's you know? not being a man. It's not, not at all. And so to say like before, what I think needs to happen is that I think men need to help hold themselves accountable and they need to start taking up the role of being a father again. Mm-hmm. I feel like if you're going to have a baby, you might as well have the mentality of being a the good father, father yeah. or yeah. just being a damn father. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because some, but also on that, like a lot of fathers are in the picture, but they're like workaholics. So like mm. how much are they really there? Mm. So a father is not just being the provider, protector and all that stuff. It's also being- A father. The, yeah, the father, the leader, uh, passing down the knowledge. Because think of it like this, right? I think for us, naturally, and I think for women too, they would like to find a partner that they could look up to, that they could yeah. learn from, mm. and like they could be led by them, mm-hmm. willingly led by them, right? And I think that that dynamic needs to continue with the children. It shouldn't be if the if the mother was looking up to you at a certain point to be uh, led and that she wanted to learn from you and you inspired her and stuff like that. I feel like you should leave the same imprint on your kids too. Your kids should also want to do the same thing. Yeah, you know what I mean. But I feel like a lot of dads is just like, you know, like I'm working, I'm doing this for the family, I'm doing this for us. But it's like, yeah. how much are you actually there raising your children with your wife? It comes back to the same problem as like when you hear kids saying like the dad was there, always there, but not there because he was at work. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, the kid feels the same way that like if the dad would have completely left. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing as like you always at work, you whatever, you don't do your father's job. But then what's the... What's the 50-50? You, you can, okay, so what's your lifestyle? The way you're like, okay, I'm going to provide for the family, blah, 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 blah. How do you see yourself putting this slime at 50-50 of I need to be a father and I need to provide for the family? Mm-hmm. This is like, it's, it's, it's hard if you think about it because you're like, I need, most of those workaholic men have this mentality that I want to provide for you. So then therefore they put a lifestyle, they have this big house, big payments, big blah, blah, blah. They've been doing that for years. Yeah. And now they have kids. Yeah. How do you put the 50-50 or like the limit that's like, shit, I'm going to need to be a father now. I need to put a stop somewhere. Because I have an, 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 I have an unorthodox way of thinking of how I would want the, my family dynamic to be. I don't personally see myself having my kid in school five days a week. Okay. I feel like having my kid in there in, in order to gain like social skills and meeting new kids and developing it's part of that brain through school, no problem. But I would like a lot of the the learning and time spent with my children to be at home with the family. Okay. Do you get what I'm saying? So um I've been just doing like a lot of research and looking into these things um in order to make that a possibility because I saw that on average people get 30 minutes a day with their children of quality time. So we're not talking about cleaning them. We're not talking about doing their homework with them. We're not talking about doing any other things that are like responsibilities as parents. We're talking about quality time. We're talking about 30 minutes. So, and not, and just take in consideration how many parents, how much watch time they have on their phones and how much of that time could actually be spent into spending time with their kids. So to me, a lot of the issues I think can be resolved by having more quality time with the kids. Mm. I'm not against school. I'm all for education in ways I loved high school. I loved primary. I loved what it did for me. I met new people. I met amazing people that are still my friends to this day. I learned and grew with them. And me as a person, there's a lot of character development, right? Because you go through like your first kiss, you get, you know, you get bullied, you go through all these um, emotions. Yeah. Phases and emotions of character development, which I think is crucial in someone's upbringing. But I just feel like in terms of like the schooling, like the curriculum and how the school uh, system is structured is like it's not you. I don't think in order for my kid to be successful, it needs to be spending that much amount of time in school Mm -hmm. for that many hours a day where I think he'll learn a lot from me as his father and from his mother um, and learn just as much, if not more, but at home. What about you? Would you would you get your kid five times a week at school? I actually would because I'm more in the, um, how do you say that? I'm more in the, I want him to feel everything. Mm. The heartbreaks, the get friends, mm-hmm. get turned, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Get rejected. I mean, probably not rejected as much, you know? Mm-hmm. But like rejected, all that stuff. I want him to just learn. 
And then, uh, but eight hours is a lot. Mm. Eight hours in the day is a lot. And I know that I don't know what the other kids are going to tell my kid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Next thing you know, he comes back and says some, some stupid shit. I'm like, what? Where'd you mm. learn that? That's cool. Because mm. okay, like people, the school itself is going to mold my kid. Because my kid is so innocent. He comes out with with no nothing, you know. All the, the knowledge he gets the most is at school, in a way. So like, I feel like it's so easy to just mold a kid because of uh, what's going on and what's being said at school. So, I yeah, I would. But I th- I would. but you see, that's what I feel like. What the problem is, I feel like the fact that the school molds my kid is what bothers me. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't mind that it molds his like personalities and stuff like that, but not to the point where he doesn't have a mind of its own or it's not able it's or that my kids are not able to critically uh, critically think for themselves Mm -hmm. you know to know the right from wrong without someone telling them what's right and wrong yeah you know what i mean other kids let's say yeah so like like a like a thing that my dad to this day always says you know when we were young he would always try to make us critical thinkers where when we were when we would come and ask him a question he would always say well what do you think rather than kind of just give us the answer Mm -hmm. do you know what i mean because that forces the kid to develop its, its, you know, the part of the brain where it's to reason with what's right and what's wrong, and to base yourself off your own opinions and how you right. feel about the the, the matter. You and know, not just someone else giving you, like you said, the answer right away. Yeah, exactly. And I think kids naturally are like that. Even if a parent says, "Hey, don't run around the pool; you're gonna fall," or "Stop running; you're gonna hurt yourself," or "Don't put your hand on the stove because it's hot," yeah. the kids are still gonna fucking do it. Mm. So sometimes it's like do it. They have to, and that's how they learn mm. is by them doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, for the school thing, my way of thinking, I don't think there's many people is not gonna agree. Because um, for some people it's a PTSD or whatever. But let me know what you think. For me, he would definitely he she whatever good would go five times a week. But I would travel a lot different countries and different school countries. And the reason I'm saying that is because I have cousins that have been living in different countries to school and the way they're thinking, the way they're acting, it's completely different from us. Like them being in different schools in different countries and to, they have friends, they have friends for a long time, whatever, but since they've been in different countries, different culture, different whatever, the way, the maturity, just the way they are, I was nothing compared to them. And let's say the the oldest one is three boys. The oldest one is like 18. And I was nowhere close to be like that when I was 18. Mm-hmm. The way he's thinking, the way he is, his critical thinking, the way, because for, it was always adaptation, right? So as you said, like you go to school and then you mold a personality, you talk to people, things happen, but it's this, but to the point that you always have to also start over. So get new friends, be in school, start with yeah. talk to new people and even learn new languages. Bro, these two boys speak four language. Yeah. So like it's things like that. I and just me, my personality, how I am, I don't want like I said earlier, I don't I don't like I'm not routine. I'm not I don't want to stay in the same spot. I like experiences. Yeah. So me myself, even for work, I would like to be Traveling, traveling, stuff. going different countries for six, seven months, a year, two years, and go around the world. Yeah, so I agree with that a hundred percent. I just know for children, it's a lot harder for them yeah. to adapt and yes. have to go through those changes. Mm-hmm. But I think the perfect balance would be keeping my kids in and out of school throughout the year, but at the same school. Do you know what I mean? Because I had the the dynamic that I don't want them to be there five days a week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Them skipping two weeks because we want to go spend you know, those two weeks in Spain mm. and those they could go in Spain with the same like school program or I will continue the curriculum in Spain with them, mm. you know? So, okay. Are you guys for like some sort of like half homeschool? Well, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. you could have the benefits of traveling, having them see the world, but then like two or three weeks later, they come back and they still have their same uh, uh, like social mm. circle of friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's the kind of dynamic that I would have. It's kind of, kind of like a like a, a hybrid of like homeschooled and like going to actual school. Okay, mm. yeah, that's how I would see it. Hundred percent. You get the best of both worlds. Yeah, you get the best of both. Yeah. worlds. They get to, they get to see the world. You know, I could have them learn a new language. I could have someone you know with us while we're traveling to teaching them Spanish or whatever. So I think I think that kind of dynamic. I think. In the day and age that we live in now, it's a lot more possible yeah, to definitely. have that done if mm-hmm. you obviously have the financial situation for yeah, it. Yeah, of course. But again, that's the kind of lifestyle that I'm striving for and that I want. So that's what essentially I would see for myself and what I'm manifesting. 100%. They still have their social skills to being built up with the other friends at school. Exactly. 
So, last thing before we finish, yep. I had to talk about my epiphany. <laughs> um, I've had I've had this this phase now where I've realized is that I've been more uptight than usual. Where I feel like as a few months ago, I had like more so like this personality where I was more like laid back, cool, calm and collected, more nonchalant. And I feel like a lot of things that I've been taking both from a personal side to friendships, to family, to even my, my relationships, I've been taking them like a little bit too seriously. I've been like dealing with certain issues or certain um, events uh like with too much ego mm -hmm. we're like that's not my type my usual type is to just be like you know like don't worry about it it's fine like we like you know like just forget it and whatever but it's like now it's like i i feel like recently i've had like this trigger where in moments like i let my ego get in the way too much where i'm more willing to want to argue or debate or be bothered by t uh, by a particular situation you know like i was always a cool guy like and not like as the person but just like as a like a chill, chill yeah. per person and like i i even realize it in in very micro circumstance like even soccer like i find myself getting tense to like almost feel like i'm ready to to fight someone mm. where that was never my type i was always a type to even if i got hit and i fell cool no problem it's part of the game keep it moving so i just feel like lately i've been very much so on edge in all aspects of my life to whereas like lately I kind of took on lately. It's been a few days, but this is my journey. So you guys are going to be along here with me. I've been kind of taking like the more like this like meditative route, mm -hmm. this like self reflected route, and uh, working on my ego and putting it back to where it once was, where it wasn't um, affecting you as much. Yeah, it wasn't as it wasn't as um, predominant in my lifestyle. Okay. You know, so that's my that's the epiphany where, where I'm at. And I don't know if it's been like that lately. Obviously, like when we roast each other, it's something different. But I just feel like just from like the day-to-day -day situations now, now it's much, much more so like, yeah, no problem. Perfect. All good. No worries. No stress. Okay. As it should be, man. <laughs> that was my epiphany. What's epiphany again? Uh, empathize. 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 So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I didn't even say it at the beginning. Empathize. What? Say I what? didn't even say it at the beginning. Don't forget to wow. like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to check us out on... Patreon. Patreon. Wow. Did we get it first time? Yeah, we got it on the first time. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, we'll see you guys next week. It's been your boy Sergio's Talks. It's your boy Matt. And it's your boy Carl. And uh, don't forget to check us out on Patreon because you guys get an extra episode this Friday. It's mm. the gang. Bye. Bye, Patreoners. Bye, yeah, YouTubers. If Bye. Um. <laughs> Baja hasta abajo la baby se mueve, ella se mueve, ella se mueve.